And good morning once again. It's time for Harbor Place, brought to you by, I should say, Senior Talk, brought to you by Harbor Place, located on 3700 Southeast Jennings Road in Port St. Lucie. We're joined today by Diane McDonough. There, She's their Director of Sales. And good morning, Diane. Will you please introduce our guest this morning? Yes. Good morning, Paul, and to all our listeners on the Treasure Coast. I was in a rear-end car collision, Paul, and it happened last year. My whole body was aching. I was referred to a chiropractor. I wasn't sure what to expect. I have to say it was a good experience. If you don't know about chiropractic care, tune in. You may also benefit with relief. Our special guest today is Dr. Timothy Kennedy and his lovely wife, Lynette. She is a... Lynette, what are you? Uh, I am a personal trainer and nutritionist and athlete. Oh, and so much more. Yeah. She's going to tell us all about it as well. And um, I wanted to say uh, thank you for being on our show. And good morning, Dr. and Mrs. Kennedy. Please share with us and our listeners more about you and why did you become a chiropractor? And how do you and your wife, Lynette, work together as a team with Lynette's personal trainer experience? Well, that's a, that's a lot in one question, but thank you for having us on. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Tim Kennedy. I became a chiropractor uh, years ago when I first came into contact with the profession after an accident I had experienced that left me with sharp, sharp, nine out of 10 pain uh, that ran from my, my back down to my toe every single time I stepped with my left leg. I mean, every single time I stepped, I went from an athlete that would train a few hours a day in the gym to being stuck on a couch, smoking cigarettes, because I couldn't do much of anything that didn't cause me extreme pain. Uh, I have medical doctors in my direct family uh, up north in Connecticut, where I'm from. So I was, I was under their care, and I felt that they had the best intentions for me, which they did. But the traditional medical route failed me, unfortunately. I have a, a huge respect for medical doctors and orthopedic surgeons. But after about two years uh, with many, many different professionals and lots of different approaches to, to treatment and care and medication, nothing worked. And I was on the verge of giving up uh, and, and going for surgery. And I had a bad experience with the surgeon who I was going to uh, trust my back with that left me with with no faith in him after I left of o left his office so despondent at that point I, I kind of uh, someone suggested I try a chiropractor and I had heard of chiropractic I had heard the name but didn't really know what they did so I remember I will never ever forget I remember going through the exam and it was almost identical to many of uh, what the other doctors had done with me and at the end, he tells me what's going on, tells me his idea for, for treatment and what we should do. And I'm thinking, okay, so what medication are you going to prescribe me? And he says, oh, we don't do that. And a bit shocked in the back of my head, I'm thinking, you know, what the heck kind of doctor is this? Because that's culturally what we're used to. Culturally, we're used to going to the doctor and, and getting medication for treatment. Uh, and, and then if all goes well, everything is fine. But... After dealing with it for two years, after two weeks, I started feeling better. And after two months, I was completely resolved. So that's, that's how I became a chiropractor. And ever since then, I felt partially indebted to the profession. And I wanted to do the same for others. I wanted to teach others that hadn't been exposed to it and, and tell people that <coughs> there are other options besides medications and surgery. You know, that makes me think about when I go see a neurologist or a doctor and, I, and my pain isn't right in front of you, like an open wound. And I always wonder, does that doctor really understand what I'm going through? So it's, it is a, a real bonus to have a doctor know what you're going through because he went through it, because he has more empathy and sympathy and he knows what they're looking for and, and they're what their goals are is important for him, just as it was for you. So how do you and your lovely wife work together as a team? Because this, this is kind of a new concept, seeing um, a chiropractic office 
uh, as your office is, Live Young Chiropractic, with um, the services you offer. Do you want to take that one or no? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a blessing and a challenge. She does a lot of the rehab and exercise work, which go hand in hand with what I do. Uh, I'm a firm believer in most people out there with pains, ailments, afflictions under the right course of care and strengthening the appropriate muscles, most people can have complete resolution of their pain. So we work together very well. She also helps with another big part of just the um, American situation is, is diet and nutrition. And, and that's, that's a big part of what we do as well. What are your locations, contact information, and website? Well, we have two locations. One location is in Stewart. It's right off of Dixie Highway. The address is 500 Southeast Dixie Highway in Stewart. Three, four, nine, wait, <laughs> what's our zip code? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Excuse me, three, four, nine, nine, four. We have another location located in Port St. Lucie West. It's 1680 Southwest St. Lucie West Boulevard in Port St. Lucie West, 34986. Uh, our suite number is 201. We're located right above the West End Grill or the Vine and Barley for those that like to uh, have landmarks um, to find us. And those are good landmarks, by the way. They are very good <laughs> landmarks, yes. How long have you been there? In the Port St. Lucie West location, we have, um, that is our second, and we just opened up November 1st officially. Uh, Stewart, we've been Stewart, open. we officially opened in November of 2014. Okay. Fantastic. Stewart, yeah, Stewart is right in the downtown area, uh, you, a stone's throw from Confusion Corner. Most people know where that is. And St. Lucie West is across the street from Walmart. There's right on the main road. I would like to review the topics on your website. It's a great website. Those, what is the website again? So someone can jot it down. LiveYoungChiropractic.com. Fantastic. Uh, one section talks about the chiropractic care. So let's go ahead and begin with that. Chiropractic care. So it, it's, that's one thing that I feel a lot of people are somewhat uh, confused about. Chiropractic has become synonymous with cracking the neck, cracking the back, and, and that's, all, that's all you do. When in actuality, there are plenty of chiropractors who do that alone, but our scope of practice is very similar to a physical therapist. So a full range evidence-based chiropractor, as we like to call ourselves, perform manual therapies. We use instrumentation to loosen up tissues, help improve injury. We use exercise. Uh, we use mo modalities like uh, ultrasound and electric stim, class four lasers. Uh, there's a lot more than just a simple cracking of bones or joints. So let's go through some of the most common patient challenges. Lower back pain. Lower back pain, that's the, that obviously that's the biggest one. That's what chiropractors are known for. That's what we're very good at. Um, that's, what, what were you looking for as far as just Yeah, discussing? just lower pain. Uh, what are some of the um, problems, um, exercises, or chiropractic care that you can offer for that? Gotcha. Okay. Uh, lower back pain, I think, is the number two reason people go to their doctor, any doctor of any sort in the United States, and through just some manual therapy, perhaps an adjustment if warranted, if necessary, as well as a few simple exercises, a lot of, a lot of times uh, core exercises to counter our population, which, which sits quite a bit nowadays and doesn't really have much of a, an active core. Uh, between those, we tend to be very, very successful with treating lower back pain. I'll do, I, I was gonna say, Diane, earlier, I'd reach down one morning to grab something heavy didn't prepare myself probably for it. it was kind of side angle like and I turn and I and my back I mean to tell you it took me literally <clears> months <throat> to get over it I should have gone to a chiropractor so should have should have yeah, you didn't know about it then <laughs> well I you know as we all go through life we hear people talk about goods and the bads and I've always I, I've been to them I've been to chiropractic myself I've always been satisfied with it I just I, 
something, for example, the doctor said, well, you need to have some physical therapy. So I went to a physical therapist. They taught me all the how to stretch my legs and my arms. And then in time, that took care of it. But those are the kind of things that the MD did not tell me. He told right. me to go to this therapist and he and she or he would take care of it. And that's what really happened. The doctor didn't do anything to make it feel better, right. interestingly enough. Yeah. Well, that's what he was saying earlier, how culturally uh, the medical <coughs> profession are more likely to refer you a medication for mm -hmm. your symptom as opposed to fixing the issue. And that's where we're a lot different. Mm -hmm. And they, they have phenomenal training when it comes to life and death situations or the use of medication. Obviously, they are the guys to go to. I'm not saying chiropractors are, should be a choice for that stuff. But when it comes to a mechanical issue, a musculoskeletal issue, they have so much training in what they do, I don't feel as if most of them have the time in their curriculum to gain the sort of appreciation for that, treating those, those problems that we do. Yeah, we just talked about lower back and then neck pain. Neck pain. Neck pain, the same thing goes. Most of, most of the problems, whether it's lower back or neck pain, a lot of it comes from countering what <coughs> we do all day. No. So I see a lot of people that are seated or at a computer uh, looking forward all day. And if you can imagine, it's an alliteration I use with a, a lot of, almost every, every day with a lot of patients. If you can imagine a huge radio tower antenna, with guy wires that pull on either side to keep it straight up. If you bias it to one direction, have it leaning forward as if we, as we do all day looking at, at a screen or sitting, eventually the wires that are supposed to support it on that one side become weak and they don't really do much of anything. And the wires on the opposing side, which are ho now holding it up, become overworked. That's what often happens with our backs and our necks. Those muscles just need a break, and they need the muscles on the other side to help out. Does it typically take more than one visit? I mean, obviously, it, doesn't, it probably depends upon what it is, but mm -hmm. do you usually see a patient more than once before they're taken care of? Or I wish I could see, yeah. I could see people only once. Uh, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is one. I, I will typically like to see someone for, one, the initial figure out what it is, treat them, and then see them for a follow-up if it is you know just completely resolved probably within a week or two um, on average when it comes to a problem that is new all of a sudden they did something and it's not an actual injury if they didn't herniate a disc if they didn't uh, cause something to pinch a nerve um, those typically are resolved within three or four visits i, I believe the national average is is for chiropractors is about six to 12. And I'm proud to say I'm well below that. Dr. Kennedy, you were telling me about a success story. This might be a good time to mention that. Okay. Uh, well, I have, I have quite a few success stories, uh, but one of my favorites, I have a, uh, a woman who's in her mid fifties right now and she was referred to me by her husband and with much reluctance, she didn't really want to come in, took her months, I think, if not a year, f to actually come in. Uh, this woman has had scoliosis and back pain since she was about 17, 18 years old. And her <laughs> life has revolved around going to a chiropractor three, four times a week just to not be in constant pain. I remember she told me herself <clears throat> that often she would have to plan vacations around chiropractor visits because she would just be in nonstop, unrelenting pain. And uh, also she's, she's never been away for a week, more than a week. Without, on, without being adjusted by without, a chiropractor. Well, on vacation period. For that reason. Yeah. 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 So she was used to that constant sort of care, the constant expense of going to a chiropractor. And after about four months uh, of treatment, um, with varying amounts, I have her down to seeing her at this point, I believe, once every three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. That's an example. A good one, Paul. How does insurance work with the chiropractic? It doesn't. Okay. That's, that's my okay. take on it. Uh, I, don't, I don't accept health care insurance for the reason that a lot of people go to chiropractors and their gripe is 
They put me on a table. They put a hot or cold pack on me. They adjusted me, and then they sent me on their way. And those are the things that people commonly see in chiropractor's offices because that's what insurance pays for. So to not be limited by healthcare insurance, I, I don't accept it. Uh, the reimbursements for chiropractors are, are, are very, very low. Uh, and the co-pays for most people, they're considered specialists. So for most people, they're 45 to $65. And my cash office visit is $50. So it's, it's pretty much a wash. You get better care, you get more time with me, and oftentimes you get better results. Fantastic. And you also see motor vehicle accident rehab. Yes. That's, a, that's a, about a third of what I see uh, between athletes, standard chiropractic visits, and uh, injury rehabilitation, of which motor vehicles come into that. I also see referrals from orthopedic surgeons, and uh, other doctors in the area. But <clears throat> when it comes to injury rehabilitation, that's a, a totally different animal than uh, your typical chiropractic patient or an athlete in that through the forces of an, especially an accident, you actually have failure, you have damage, you have tear uh, of tissues and muscles and discs. And nobody is better at helping those repair processes along the way than, than a chiropractor. Uh, inflammation, uh, anti-inflammatory drugs, those type of things are helpful initially, but they, in the end, impede the repair process and leave people more stiff, far more stiff, than if they had received manual care, manual therapy. Uh, the difference is, as we all know, anytime you have a scar, Whenever a scar forms, whether it's on your skin or within a muscle, the scar itself is only about two-thirds as elastic as it was before. And with manual therapy, we maximize how mobile that tissue becomes to limit the stiffness after the fact. Sciatica, you had that? Sci I did, yes. I and there's so that. many seniors that have it now as yes. they're listening to us. And it's, it's, um, it's hard to get relief. What would you suggest? Uh, what the first thing I would suggest is making sure you saw a competent chiropractor because sciatica just seems to be a catch-all nowadays. People think they have back pain uh, and it's automatically labeled sciatica when a lot of times it isn't and you don't have to live with it even if it was. There are lots of different options out there but many times it's as simple as certain muscles that are so tight from, again, sitting or misuse that those muscles are squeezing down on the sciatic nerve, causing the sciatica type pain, but it's not true sciatica. So I would start with going to a, a physician that's trained and is actually going to diagnose you and look at muscles, look at tissues, and know the difference between something that just needs to be adjusted and something that is uh, a true sciatica versus a, a sciatica type sort of affliction. With sciatica, do you also recommend exercise or some That's type of physical rehab? Absolutely. Stretching, Stretching is that what you off also offer them after you see them at, with yeah. the chiropractic care? That is, that's a big part of it because a lot of times it's, it's uh, when it comes to sitting, sitting we're actually stretching the gluteal muscles. So those muscles become chronically weak and they don't do their part and then the smaller muscles within the hip have to pick up the slack they tighten up and get overworked and they squeeze down on those nerves and it causes what what most people seem uh, or see feel is sciatica oh, fantastic as we come to the end of the first half hour of our show before the break i wanted to th our listeners to know about your contact information again contact information for anyone who's interested the our phone number is 561-342-1577 the website is www.liveyoungchiropractic.com and we're located in both downtown Stewart as well as St. Lucie West if I wanted to make an appointment how does that happen uh, you does. call the number 561-342-1577 and my awesome, awesome staff who is patient and, and deals with all of our, all of uh, 
the challenges that come with running two offices, they will, they, they can set you up pretty easily. Yeah, I'm very busy. I'm running around. So it was nice to receive a text message every a few days or a day before my appointment yes. with you. So a lot of good customer service I saw in your office. Um, nice explanation of um, what's going to occur once I came in. And um, you took me through exactly what you said was going to happen. And um, it was a very good experience. Matter of fact, I just referred a friend to you. Yes. And um, she called it cracking. And I'm like, oh, I don't think they call it no, that. We don't. But <laughs> But um, she did tell me that she enjoyed her visit. And is she returning? Yes, she did. Is she she's returning? Returning yeah. again for her third visit. Fantastic. You know what I, I liked about the appointment, uh, appointment for me is that um, I guess because of my neck injury, I'm compensating just drooping my neck and slouching. And um, I know that my lower back was hurting. And just simple, someone just saying, why don't you sit up straight? Think about sitting up straight. And um, actually, it is helping. So little reminders like that. It's interesting how he took me through the system and um, really helped me with my relief. And I, yes, I have to take it a step further, unfortunately. But what he was offering was amazing. And we're going to talk about some of those techniques that you used as well on me and as you would use on others, and it's tools that uh, would ensure your quickest recovery through your office. All right? I'm going to say, of course, watching football this weekend, I think the most professional teams have a chiropractor on staff. Every, every single NFL team has a chiropractor. It's obviously it's a sign of the times, Diane. You know, we're, as we get older, in certain parts of the body, especially like the doctor was mentioning earlier, you know, we're, we're such a uh, society that kind of sits around a lot. I mean, honestly, uh, I, if I don't get out ride my bike once in a while or do the exercises I was told to do to get my back straight away, I, I feel sluggish, quite frankly. Right. And, uh, you know, sitting behind this desk at the radio station doesn't do any much better. We don't stretch our – I think Cliff should start beginning a workout session at, say, 10 past 8 in the morning. But we get here at 5, so it's a long, long day. And it's, uh, you feel so much better when you work out, so much better. I know I do anyway. Great. We've got about 30 seconds before we go to news. We're going to do this. Overwhelming fear. And good morning once again. It's time to return to Senior Talk, brought to you as always by Harbor Place. And they're located down there at 3700 Southeast Jennings Road in Port St. Lucie. This morning we're joined by Diane, of course. Diane's always here with us. She's the Director of Sales at Harbor Place. Her guest this morning is Dr. Tim Kennedy and his wife, Lynette. Good morning again, folks. Diane, take it away. Great, and they're joining us from Live Young Chiropractic. Doctor, can you tell us more about the tools of the chiropractic? The, there's a lot of different options, like I mentioned before, as far as what we can use for tools. Um, you know, a lot of the older school chiropractors, they, just, they, they tend to adjust only, and that's their choice. I respect them. Uh, but the way I was trained being a newer clinician uh, trained in the last five years I was exposed to a lot more so I have a lot more in my tool belt than some who haven't tried to keep up um, so yes I do the the typical chiropractic adjustments uh, we utilize uh, spinal decompression which is similar to a medieval torture device but mm -hmm. when used properly it's actually helpful instead of uh, good at pulling off limbs uh, I also incorporate massage uh, both with uh, licensed therapists as well as specific soft tissue therapies that I do personally, uh, depending on what's needed for the individual. Uh, I use cold laser or hot laser therapy, as you experienced. Yes. Uh, that's, a, that's a very big one. I was very skeptical about it myself until I, I used it myself and had great experience with uh, a torn quadricep muscle. Uh, it completely got rid of the pain for me, so much so that I went back to training and I retore it. So it was uh, almost too good there. Uh, beyond, uh, beyond laser, I use uh, ultrasound. There's various instruments which are used to break up fascia, scar tissue, and help things heal quicker. The traditional electric stim, which most people know, are small pads that are placed on muscles and stimulate the muscle so as to reduce the tone and help things not squeeze so hard and feel so painful. Uh, there's other things. I'm trying to think of some of the other big ones. There's 
specific stretches that are found uh, to be very, very good at and helpful for reducing the tone in muscles. Uh, rock tape, that's a big one that I use mostly with athletes, but it's also very helpful in, in people that have pain as well as to stabilize and promote better posture. It gives, uh, it gives some feedback. You, if you can imagine the old sort of athletic tape, it's different in that you can stretch it, pull it apart, and almost see through it. So it, it moves and flexes with your skin, and it's very non-restrictive, but at the same time it provides quite a bit of feedback and pull on the skin. So that works very well. I'm sure there's a few others that I'm forgetting at the moment, but for the that's all right. Those are great. I know that you used some of those tools and methods on me, and and it was amazing. I wasn't sure (laughs) about them, but once you did it, I went home. It did feel a lot better, so I appreciate that. Um, I do want to talk about um, the core muscles first on the chiropractic end uh, with with you, doctor, and then Lynette on the exercise end of your core muscles. Doctor, we'll start with you. How important it is, and what do you do to help improve it? especially for seniors. Core muscles, most people don't realize that movement starts within the core. So if you're starting with a core that should be relatively solid, that's actually a a bowl of jello, well then you're not going to have good control of your your legs, your hips, your knees, um, or shoulders. What would be the core muscles though? Kind of explain that a little bit. So when most people refer to the core muscles, they think of their abdominals. And it's not just the abdominals, it is the entire waistband. So the abdominals, the low back, the obliques on the sides of your your abdomen, all of those muscles are essentially comprised the core muscles. All right, and then Lynette? Any suggestions for building up your core muscles on exercise and especially for our seniors? Well, we hear it a lot and most people think of building your core, like my husband said, would be just a lot of sit-ups. And actually, planking is one of the best things that you can do to build your core. Um, And you can do different variations of a plank. You can start off of an elevated surface. So up against a table or onto a chair. You can start from the push-up position or the other variants of your push-up from your knees. And you can just play with it to your ability, but everyone can do a plank to some effect. Fantastic. So doctor, when when, uh, we hear these cracks, when we're getting worked over by you, what's making that noise? I think I know, but why don't you... uh elaborate a bit for us. So the, the cracking or popping sound that we hear when we perform an adjustment is just the release of gases from within a joint. That's all it is. That's a good thing. It is. It, it is a good thing. It doesn't essentially, it's not necessarily, it doesn't always have to occur in order for an adjustment to be successful or helpful, mm-hmm. but it feels pretty darn good when it does. It's, it's gratifying to, to me when it happens as well as the patient. Chiropractic care for that improves arthritis. Arthritis. So maybe it doesn't necessarily improve arthritis, but it can prevent or slow the progress of arthritis because uh, bones, the ends of bones, they receive nutrition from movement. So the vertebra, they only receive nutrition when the spine is moving the right way. So if we have a a fixated joint uh, within the spine or anywhere else in the body and it's not moving the right way, then the ends of the bones aren't receiving nutrition and gradually they start wearing out and decaying from that, whether it's from misuse or just simply wearing away because they don't have the the minerals to replace themselves and stay healthy. Lynette, what kind of exercises would you recommend those with arthritis? Well, depending on your level of exercise and age, obviously, um, we would start with body weight exercises until we can move um, with proper form and weights. Lifting weights is actually great for bone density. Um, Like the doc said, uh, lifting weights builds bone density and could prevent or slow the process down of arthritis. So no matter the age, Obviously, I'm not going to have my 80-year-old woman lift 300 pounds, but I can get her to do it with a set of 5 or 10-pound dumbbells, um, and she's still getting the use and movement that I want her to achieve 
and slowly over time she can build a little bit more we work up to about you know the the weight of a few gallons of milk at most Uh, and and it's more when it comes to an older population we're more trying to improve function Mm -hmm. uh, improve balance to help people remain strong enough to to not have to fall or or rely on care Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing about osteoporosis is that when it comes to osteoporosis osteopenia the best medications in the world will only restore about two percent bone mineral density whereas weight training done over the same period of time over the course of a year can restore about 12 percent and that's without the use of medication how about joint degeneration just like what i was saying earlier as far as how the joints and the ends of bones receive uh, nutrition um, proper movement is essential to stay or slow the process of degeneration. At your office, um, you have a patient-centered care at Lev Young Chiropractic. What does that mean? That means that I'm more concerned with the patient than making a boat payment. So, uh, you know, a, a lot of people... <laughs> well said. A lot of chiropractors are, are worried about, or I'm not just going to say just chiropractors to single anyone out, but a lot of doctors focus on what's going to make them the most money. And in healthcare, that's a, that's a difficult thing that we battle with because, yes, we have to take care of people, but at the same time, we have to pay bills, we have to keep the doors open, we have to pay staff and make everything happen all together. So a lot of times people work away from what's actually beneficial for the patient because they have bills to pay, and I don't do that. Yeah, and we find that because we care so much that people are more likely to refer their friends and family. I do exactly. zero marketing. That is true. We do zero marketing, and it's all zero. referral-based because we actually care about you getting better. We don't want to see you in the office. <laughs> That's what I say to people day in and day out. It's, it's, you know, I'll see someone that I haven't seen for a few weeks, and then you know, when, I, when they're leaving, I say, well, I hope I don't see you again for a while because, honestly, I don't. I like to keep it to the minimum amount necessary in order to keep them feeling their best. Well, now tell us more about you, your experience, and what you do there at the <laughs> office. It's so detailed. There's so much. Um, I've done a lot since uh, Tim and I have been together. Um, I've been an athlete for about eight or nine years in various sports. I would say I started in bodybuilding for a little bit, and I fell in love with Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, and that was what we had in common with the two of us because he, he does as well. Um, so I competed in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for a while, um, and then I found my way to CrossFit where um, I thought would help with my explosive power. And I fell in love with CrossFit. <laughs> and um, She falls in love a lot. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I, just, um, I like to find things that push and challenge me and, and keep my mind, um, you know, working and CrossFit does that, um, Jiu Jitsu does that. Those are just uh, different different things where it's always something different, it's never the same. And then I found my final love in Olympic weightlifting and I've been doing that the last five years. Yes, and now you're doing the personal training at the office. Yeah, so I do, uh, like he said earlier, his rehab for his patients and um, personal training I do offer that not as much uh, so not as much now because we're focusing more on his patient base Um, and I also still do nutrition um, out of the office as well do you recommend any nutrition facts to our listeners that are listening that are seniors Uh, my biggest thing would just be to find a balance I know there's a lot of material out there a lot of google doctors i like to call people (laughs) and it's really 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 hard to find something um that's accurate you know i i even myself when i come across someone that i work with i'm like hey you know this is what i recommend this is what i do and this is why i do it however i want you to go out and do your research and if you have any questions i can break it down and and discuss my view on it and why I I view it that way. But, you know, my best thing would be to 
do your research as well on top of what a professional is telling you. And in that that might sound like, you know, well, do you not know what you're talking about? That's actually not true. I'm just, I want you to learn as well. If you take a, take a bit of an ownership role in it, that's what I always encourage people to do is this is your health. Don't take my word for mm-hmm. it. Don't, don't listen to any other doctor. Yes, take it all into consideration, but check it out for yourself and, and make sure it works. And, and if, you, if anything is questionable, get a second opinion mm-hmm. by all means. Find what works for you. Uh, one thing I would say regarding nutrition that's come out very contrary to what we've heard over the last 20, 30 years growing up is that fats aren't bad for you. Yes. Trans fats, not good. Stay away from those. But fats, uh, a lot of the fat-free foods are not really good because they replace it with sodium and sugar. And as we all know, or are coming to now know, sugars are far more detrimental for us, uh, both weight-wise, weight control, cardiovascular system, far more detrimental to us than fats. So and, and, our, uh, and our brain, and neurologically. Right. The inflammation pro- mm-hmm. that, that it is stimulated by uh, by sugar is just terrible for the, the entire system. Yes. Somebody once said that if sugar were, were just came out tomorrow morning, it would be outlawed. Yes, yes. <laughs> practically yes. a drug. Well, the, <laughs> the studies in Alzheimer's alone and what sugar does to the brain is, is amazing. I mean, Dr. Uh, Mary, Mary Newman did a study with her own husband who was suffering from Alzheimer's I'm and sorry. coconut oil. And they found that when she started supplementing with coconut oil, which is a great fat, um, that he was progressing for the better, and they did it from year to year. And they still had him on small doses of medication to aid in the process. However, when they took him off of the coconut oil and added the medication, it made it worse. So just to see it, just in the study alone, to what fat does in that aspect, in the huge disease that we de- deal with across this country is is amazing to me. So that I agree with with my husband there that sugar is one of the the biggest culprits in nutrition, and fats are fats are great. Good fats are great. Control your sugars and carbohydrates, and eat more fats. I don't know about you, Paul. I love um, sugar. I do too. That's I do too. I mean, who uh, who doesn't? you know, yeah. when, when we were growing up. But I know, understand <laughs> what you're trying to say. I'll have to relook at this. Let's face it. You know, 30, 40 years ago, people worked in their. They had a garden, and they and they walked a lot, and they didn't. Well, I didn't have television for many years, mm-hmm. and you went out. And when we were kids, we played in the woods next to where we lived. We didn't have a TV set, and and uh, think times have changed. And we have to change with those times. Obviously, I, right. I think. With, with the doctor and, and his lovely wife has, have mentioned that we need to take a kind of an inventory of what we eat and don't eat. You know, Cliff sitting next to us here, he's, uh, he doesn't eat any sugar at all, only because he'd probably like to, but he can't because he's a home with diabetes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's with, with the, what you mentioned here. But I want to ask you, when a customer, when a patient comes to see you, I, I was reading a while back that often you refer them to a doctor, to an MD, yeah. position because of if what it, you see yeah. if it's something out of my scope i'm i'm i have no problem i work with lots of other doctors mm-hmm. in the area and if it's something that is beyond what i can help them with then by all means i'm going to put them in the right hands of someone who can help them mm-hmm. paul uh, the doctor here he um saw me and gave me the relief i needed and the encouragement that it's it's going to be okay and he sent me to get an mri at a certain point and looked at it and he has referred me to a doctor so you take x-rays, is that correct? Do you do x-rays at your place? We don't do them in office. Okay. If necessary, we'll send someone out. That's another thing that's kind of passe is, you know, doing x-rays on everyone that comes through yeah. the door is yeah. really unnecessary. The first time I came to a chiropractor, I got a ton of x-rays. Yeah. I, I, back then, maybe it helped. I don't know. Well, reason being is it's a great marketing tool. Sure. If, if you take almost anyone, take their x-ray, and then put them next to a, a perfect x-ray, you can scare the crap out of them into yeah. saying, hey, you need to be here for the rest of your life so that this doesn't get worse. Yeah, we right. call that scare care. Yeah. Scare care. Yeah. Scare care. Oh, no. All right, sports performance. That's another category that you specialize in. Can you tell us more about that? Sports performance is, is what I'm, obviously, I'm personally very passionate about. 
I have a, a lot of cool new uh, tech toys, um, tools to help people become stronger, increase their endurance, balance, um, hand-eye coordination, and just the simple things, just hands-on manual therapy. That is also, you know, what what's gotten chiropractic famous within and amongst athletes. So we just help people move better and help them perform their best. I think, like we mentioned before, that's the reason that almost every, I believe every single NFL team has a chiropractor on the sidelines that travels with them. Running. Is running really bad for your knees? It can be. It can be. It's a, it's a lot of repetitive impact. And it's, is it harsh on your spine as well? Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, the same amount of, there's about three times, uh, three times your body weight impact is absorbed with every single stride. So... Uh, for a you know 150 pound individual, that's 450 pounds that is traveling through your ankles, knees, hips, and back every t- every single stride. So the longer you run, the more abuse your your body has to deal with. But if they come to see you for sports performance, you can I can help optimize and, and ensure that they're moving properly to to minimize that uh, and to minimize the wear and tear. But at the end of the day, we're still we're still dealing with gravity, so there, I can't change that. Unfortunately, I'm I good. I would think that swimming is probably one of your better better exercises. Absolutely, I agree. Absolutely, yeah. no contact, no right, yeah. full body exercise, little impact, and as long as you're starting off with with good joints, uh, you're not going to. The only thing I would be cautious about is if someone had an existing shoulder injury, and a lot of swimming on top of that, they're just going to scrape mm-hmm. away at things. Do you see high school and college students who play maybe football or yes. wrestling? Yes. Yeah, quite I a bit. I think that's great. I wish I knew that. When my son was um, played football at St. Lucie uh, West High School, and then he went on to play college, but I would have loved to have had him join you for some sessions just for the endurance and what you can show him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would have uh, – those are, those are very big um, – I would say more athletes than not are the, the CrossFit athletes, but as well uh, a lot of uh, combat sports, wrestling, boxing, kickboxing, uh, a lot of bodybuilders, uh, as well as everything else. Um, one surprisingly that I see a lot of uh, going kind of hand in hand with running is equestrians. That's uh, people don't realize or appreciate how much, how wearing that is on your back. The I positions, didn't think about that, yeah, the positions right. that they have to hold, mm-hmm. as well as the you know two thousand pound animal that's that's running that you're riding atop of. Interesting point is that a <laughs> friend of mine's son was into motocross. Oh yeah, oh, and they yeah. say oh, motocross yeah. is one of the most toughest things you can ever do to your body. Oh yeah, I, yeah it's that's constant rough. Constant whiplash. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I can't even imagine. Let me ask Lynette. You, you said you were into weightlifting. Yes. Um, Almost made the Olympics weightlifting. No. <laughs> no t- but tell me, now you're obviously not a large lady. You're, what, no. you're, you're petite. So do you lift weights within a certain weight category? In other words, person, a, a competition who weighs as much as you do, you a certain amount of weights, you lift as much as you can. I mean, I'm kind of let us know how that whole thing works. I'm curious. Um, if there are different weight classes, yes, there is. Um, for this specific sport, um, you get – six attempts three attempts and what we call the snatch which is from the floor all the way to overhead and then the clean and jerk which is from the floor to your shoulder and then your shoulder to overhead um and that's about it the weight class the weight class for you is my my weight class is 48 kilos which is 105 pound weight class okay so um yeah that's also a misconception that lifting (laughs) weights will make you bulky and big and that's not true unless you're working towards that goal it's physically impossible for a woman to um, build as quickly as a man would because you guys are lucky enough to have this thing called testosterone (laughs) Um, but you have to it's a lot of work to build muscle um, and it's a lot of work to get that big it's not very easy Um, (laughs) <laughs> you have to supplement that way. You have to eat that way. You have to act like it's a job. It is a job. It doesn't happen by it accident overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. overnight, and it takes years to acquire strength. 
Wow, that's great. All the services you offer in one office is just amazing. Uh, one more time, tell me about your location, your telephone numbers, websites. Well, our phone number is 561-342-1577. Our website is www.liveyoungchiropractic.com. And our two locations are in Stu- one in Stewart, one in St. Lucie West. Both are uh, great, great locations in, in popular areas. The best way, instead of us reading off the address for you, is just call the number 561-342-1577 or check out the website and you'll be able to get there pretty easily. Well, thank you for being on the show. I really appreciated the service you gave me personally and what you have shared with our listeners today. And I highly recommend you do call, give them a call and uh, find that relief that you need or the endurance. But I I do love your um, brochure that says Live Young. I think about that when seniors are looking for an independent or assisted living. Come to our community, move in, and live young. Sorry, I'm stealing it. I like it. (laughs) (laughs) And Diane, when you say live young, obviously you can live young at 80. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Yeah, we we instill in our seniors that live with us um, to build up their core muscles, to do the chair yogas and chair exercises. We encourage good diet and nutrition. We provide the meals they need. Uh, We do have events and activities to stimulate their minds. It's part of their well-being. I do want to let you know that if you want to experience assisted living at Harbor Place, we do have an event on Tuesday, January 24th at 2 p.m. We're going to have a tea party, a garden tea party. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have refreshments and music. All you have to do is give us a call, 772-337-4330, and be my pleasure to RSVP you or to give you a tour. Well, thank you, Diane, and that wraps up another great show. Um, Thank you very much, Dr. and and Mrs. We really appreciate your time Mm -hmm. and your expertise this morning. It's always good to hear. We're WPSL or Port St. Lucie. We'll be going fairly soon. We're going to go down to uh, pick up a little CBS News for you on the hour. Our temperature today right now is about, oh, 63. Going to get a high of about 77 today.